Okay, so find a comfortable position where you would like to begin the practice. Take a few moments to settle, tune in. Allow yourself a deep breath in through the nose. Maybe let it go with a sigh. Just a couple more times, breathing in through the nose. And out through the mouth. It's just like you're releasing any stress accumulated during the day. Just one more in your own time, adding as much sound as you feel you need. <laughs> And then close your eyes if you haven't already. And keep the backs of your hands on your knees if you can. Just keeping your hands and arms open. You keep your heart open because your arms are an extension of your heart. So in this simple gesture, we um, embody a state of receptivity, welcoming and openness. Maybe roll the shoulders back and down and feel your body. With each exhalation, give yourself permission to relax, let go and simply be. So mindfully arriving on the mat, ready for your practice. Shifting the focus of your attention from the external world to the internal world. Keep lengthening through the crown of your head, so perhaps you might need to drop the chin down and back. Grounding down through your seat. And then lengthening through your spine. Take another really deep breath in. And as you exhale, send a wave of relaxation through your body. You're just feeling some of the weight of the day or the week beginning to be released. Just notice the natural rhythm of your breath. Simply focusing on the entry point, so in the nostrils and above the upper lip. So the triangle pointing up towards the space between your eyebrows. Perhaps you feel drawn to a particular place in your body or along the spinal column. This may be the third eye, the spot between the eyebrows. It might be your throat, heart, your navel, your root. I'll just see if you feel drawn to any particular area. Or hold your entire body in awareness. At the same time, honing your attention. And paying extra attention to where the breath enters the body. Check if without looking, you can assess your posture so that your head is over your shoulders, your shoulders and ribs are stacked on your hips. And then last but not least, check the quality of your thoughts and your emotions. 
remembering that there is no right or wrong way to feel. It simply is. Apparently, like anything in life. So our job, our mission is not to get attached to either. Keep an evenness of the mind for the pleasure and victories. And the same evenness of the mind for any unpleasantries, even pain. Because this too shall pass. And start using your ujjayi breath. So just to begin with, take a deep breath into your belly, feeling it expanding. You can place the hand on your belly button. And then as you exhale, draw the navel in close towards the spine. So one more round like this. Breathe in. And out, draw it in. Then keep some of that firming across the abdomen and start adding a sound to both inhalation and exhalation. Growing tall as you breathe in. Softening as you breathe out. Use the breath to find your center. Squeezing your abdomen, so finding your Uddiyana Bandha as you exhale, so drawing the belly button in and up. With each breath, you let go of what no longer serves you. So on a physiological, physical level, it's the CO2. We don't need that. We need more oxygen. But then on an emotional, like mental level, there might be something that you've been holding on to. And the intention to let go is the first step. If you really want to let go, if you really want to forgive, just start with that. So you can say, I let go as you breathe out. Three more rounds of breath. I am willing to let go. I am ready for change. And allow the breath to return to its natural rhythm. And rest here for a moment. You can change the position of your hands if you like. And just feel, sense what's present. How you're starting the practice. And you can keep your eyes open or closed. And bring your left ear towards the left shoulder. Extend your right fingertips out. With the exhalation, gently roll the chin towards your chest. And then as you inhale, lift the chin up. One more, breathe out. And then breathe in. Gently coming up with the next exhalation, right ear towards the shoulder. Bring the left hand out. Inhale. And exhale, drop your chin. Relaxing the shoulders. Inhale, lift. And then exhale, bring it down. And gently lift the head up. And we're going to do something that looks crazy or funny, but it's actually really good to help release tension in the jaw. So you can channel your inner cow or inner llama. <laughs> and then just imagine that you're chewing 
grass. I guess that's, yeah, that's what cows eat. So we're gonna open the mouth really wide like this. And then it's like you're blowing like a thick kiss. So you can close your eyes for this, but you really want to open your mouth and then send the kiss. So like really like puckering your lips. So close your eyes and do this a couple of times. And then it's like you're blowing a trumpet, but just with your lid. And then move your jaw from side to side to see what's going on. Roll the shoulders up and down. Again, noticing the current level of tension or discomfort in the body. Roll the shoulders in one more time. And then switch the cross of the legs. So if you can for this one, we're gonna come into um, Ardha Padmasana, so the half lotus, only if your knee is okay with it, because tightness or tension in the hip is usually felt in the knee when it comes to hip openers, so don't force it. So if you can comfortably bring the outer edge of your foot into the hip crease, do that, otherwise you can just stay in a cross-legged position. So I've got the right foot in, so that's my version of the half lotus. Then extend your left hand out and then sweep your right arm up and over. So you're already starting to work with the hips, bringing a side bend. And with each inhalation, see if you can lengthen the body a little bit. And as you exhale, stabilize the position, draw the navel in. One more breath. And then as you exhale, drop the right hand out, coming into a gentle twist. And then bring yourself back to the center. So then lean back and gently release the top leg. And you want to switch sides quite often. And that's the case for me. But um, one side, it feels just a lot more accessible than the other. So just don't force it. When the body is ready to open up, it will. And there might be a lot of frustration. I'm only speaking through my own experience. You gotta sit with it. <laughs> so just check where you are. And then extend your right hand, navel in, inhale, left arm up, exhale, stay. Continue to lengthen through the body. And firm up as you exhale. One more cycle here. And then gently come back. Lean and then supporting the knee, release the top leg. And now we're going to come onto all fours. All right. <clears throat> so just keep a neutral position. <clears throat> you can keep your knees together, hands shoulder width apart, draw the navel in, and then as you inhale, lift your right leg up. We haven't done this in a long time, have we? And then exhale, bring it down. So four more times, breathe in and out. Three, two, gazes down, keep your neck long, one and hold. For three, two, one, bring it down. You can shake your bum out, <laughs> shake your hips out, just make sure everything's okay. The other side, so inhale, left leg up, and see if you can keep the right angle, pushing down through the shoulders, exhale, lower. Four, down, three, lift the knee as high as you can, down, two, lower, and then one, lift and hold for three, two, and one. Bring it down. You can slide into child's pose. Maybe slide your hips to one side, to the other side. Just notice what's going on. And then come back to your original position. So now we're going to lift and extend the leg. And then bring it down. Perfect, so extend and lower. One more time and down. Again, shake it out. I can feel my hips already, don't know about you. Let's do on the other side. So inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale down, keep your core active. Lift, that's it, and down. 
One more time. Lift and release. So shake it out. You can slide them to child's pose. You just slide your hips from side to side. Just give yourself a moment. And then we come back. So now we're going to bring the leg out, either in a um, bent or extended, and then bring it behind you. And you can either bring it down or lift it up, looking at the foot. Okay? Perfect. So let's do it. Inhale, lift. And then exhale, behind you. Four. And back. Three. And back. Two. Let it burn. And then one more time. Extend. Hold it. Hold it and bring it behind you. Gaze over the shoulder, hold it and back to the center. Push into cat. Maybe sway your hips from side to side. And let's do the other side. So inhale, lift your left leg and exhale behind you. Keep lifting it if you can. And fall to the side. And behind, three, and back, two, and back, one more time, to the side, hold it, strong shoulders, keep breathing, and behind you, lift it, look towards the foot, and to the center, push into cat, Maybe slide from side to side. And then make your way into downward facing dog. So bend your right leg, drawing the knee towards the chest. It's like we push the chest towards the thigh, trying to bring the ribs to the top of the leg. And then switch. To the center. Spin on your legs, lengthening through each side of the body. Spin to the other side. Come back to the center and come down to your knees. As you breathe in, stick your tailbone out. So we're initially initiating the movement with the pelvis and then one vertebra at a time. Move into cow, gaze forward. Or lift the chin up if it feels good. And as you exhale, you reverse that. So tuck your tailbone under. And then push the space between the shoulder blades out. So five more times. Following your own breath. Exhaling as you move into cat. Feel what's going on in your hip flexors. In your lower back. Keep your focus inward. And then to the center. And then draw, bring your knee towards your chest. So at the same time, you need to round through the upper back. So then hold it here, shift your weight forward. Draw your navel in. For three, two. One, extend the leg, maybe lift it up. So finding a gentle back bend to open through the hip. Navel is in, reach the foot as high as you can. And then knee to chest, protract the shoulders, hold. Breathe. And then extend the leg out, open through your heart. And then one more time. You can bring the forehead towards the knee and then extend your spine gentle pulses that's it keep your shoulders away from your ears for three two one and then the challenge point if you want you can tuck your left toes under strong core and then push yourself into three-legged dog with the right leg extended and then hold it. 
separate the shoulder blades, lift the right foot a bit higher. And drop your right foot down, come back to your knees. If you want to, you can rest your wrists, shake them out, or give them a nice little roll. Or just stay breathing if you don't need to do this. Okay, back to all fours. So make sure that you're pressing down through the fingertips and your knuckles as well. Flex your spine, knee in. Shift your shoulders past your wrists and hold. Good, the next inhalation, extend your leg, extend your spine, so drop your belly, but keep your core active. As you next exhale, round your back, knee to chest. Keep connected to your breath and your center. And inhale, extend. Take your time, lengthen through the body. Make sure the neck is long. And one more time, exhale, knee to chest, strong core. For three, two, one, re-extend. And then gentle pulses. Check what's happening with your belly button. For three, two, one, reach high. And then again, if you want to, tuck your right toes and push yourself into three-legged dog. Stabilize through the shoulders. Lift the foot a bit higher. For three, two, and one. Drop down to your knees, cross your legs, and bring them in front of you. So grab your strap, come to lie on your back, and we'll start with a passive stretch, and then move into dynamic stretches. So the strap goes over the ball of the right foot. You can extend the left leg if you like, and you can just hold the right hand or both Use both hands, just check where you are. Make sure you engage your core and step into the pelvic cavity. So essentially like Udayana Banda allows you to do that. So then you're more effective at hip flexion. If and when you feel there's room, you can bring the legs slightly closer to you. So we're aiming to open through the hips and the back of the legs. So you might have already gathered where we're going with it today. Then hold both ends of the strap, stay heavy through the left side of the body and externally re rotate the right leg. Kicking out through the heel. So both legs are active. That will help you access the adductors and perhaps even the groin muscles. Steady breath. And then come back to the center, switch your hands and bring the leg across, making sure the right hip stays down. Notice what's present and use your breath as a tool. So using it to monitor how far you've gone and whether that's appropriate. And also whenever you encounter a challenge, take a deeper breath in, slow the breath out and you can quietly say, to yourself, I'm okay. And just be present to whatever experience you're having. Back to the center, re-bend the left leg, let go of the right leg, extend both legs and pause for a moment to feel the effect, any difference between the sides. And then we switch, so left leg, So you enter the posture mindfully, honoring your body's limitations, so whether they familiar or new. Remembering the first Yoga Sutra, Yoga Atta Anusha Sam, 
which means essentially yoga begins now. So not where we were yesterday, not where we long to be, but here and now. So making the best of what you've got. And I think that's a useful piece of advice to apply to everyday life. Just make the best with what you've got. See if you can bring the legs slightly closer to you. If that um, such a move is welcome by the body. And then switch your hands. So hold the shuffle of the left and start rolling the foot out, opening through the left leg. So you feel what's happening here. What story this side's got to tell. And also any prevalent thoughts. So if you feel like you should go deeper. And then if you have such like inclination or like propensity, then stay with it and ask yourself why. Why do I need to go deeper? Or if you never try to deepen the posture, then that might also be a question worth asking. Why? Take one more cycle of breath. And then gently come back to the center, switch your hands and bring the left leg across. Navel is in, both legs are active. And then come back to the center, re the right leg, release the left, and give, straighten both legs, give them a little shake. Bring the feet as wide as the mat, so keep your legs bent, and then gently roll your legs from side to side, so like windscreen wipers. Just one more time on each side, noticing what's happening in each compartment of the hip. Then drop your legs to the left or right. I'm going to do the other side. I'm just going to stay here for a couple of breaths. So do the best you can, just trying to relax, just for two breaths. And then switch sides. I've got the same objective, to relax. <laughs> it doesn't matter if we achieve it, but just trying to come into the slightly relaxed state, but in a short space of time. So just appreciating those moments. Come back to the center, and then gently roll yourself up. Balance on your sits bones. You can hold the knees, extend them. So you're not going into like full, you can go into full Navasana, but you don't want to overdo it with the core today, but still build some core awareness. Because for where we're going, even though it's a largely it's supposed largely, um, that largely revolves around flexibility, there needs to be stability and also core awareness to keep you there. So how's it going? <laughs> Great, then drop your tippy toes down, keep holding or extending your arms and then lift your feet up. So the feet are in line with your knees. Keep lifting the center of the chest, drop your feet down, and lift up and for good luck let's do it one more time so lower and lift then cross your feet under bringing as close to your bum as you can so you can roll over and step into plank hold it here push the mat away tuck your tailbone under and use your legs keep breathing for three two one, exhale into Chaturanga of your choice. Inhale into your back bend and just stay here for a moment. Open through the chest like you want to roll the shoulder blades towards each other. And then exhale into downward facing dog. Then draw your, lift your left leg up. Bend the leg and roll the hip open. So you can keep your bodies, your chest square to the mat. This way you might be feeling more elongation across the left part of your ribs. 
or you can twist and peek from underneath your left shoulder. Keep lifting the left knee up. And then we're going to start making circles. So bring the knee towards your chest and out. We'll do it one more time. And then switch direction. So anti-clockwise. One more time. And then step your left foot between the hands. So you can stay with the right knee down, or you can just go to the deep end. Stay with the fingertips down or using blocks. Back leg is active. And keep shifting forward and back, trying to open through the left hip. And then straighten the front leg. You can keep the right heel lifted or down at a 45 degree angle to straight, to open through the back of the left leg. But sometimes I find it that the version with the knee down where you slide your hips back and the foot is flexed works better. So just see which one works for you. Because essentially you're trying to open through the back of the left leg here. Draw your toes towards the shin. Connect with your breath. And then inhale, shift forward. Exhale into downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up, bend and roll the hip open. Check what you want to do, dropping the chest down. So the foot is relaxed, but you lift the knee up, draw your navel in, your neck is relaxed, and then big circle anti-clockwise, draw the knee towards the chest, and do two circles, and then reverse, warming up the hips. And step your right foot between the hands, opening the hips through the lunge position, low or high. Just make sure that you're not sagging here, but you keep it active. Your chest is open. And then as you exhale, either straighten the front leg and bow over it. Or if you want to, you can do half Hanumanasana. So keeping the left knee down. With each inhalation, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, hinge up the hips. It's just you and your breath now. Next breath in, shift forward. And exhale into plank. Hold it here and exhale into Chaturanga. Breathe into your back bend and again stay here, lengthening through the spine, opening through the hip flexors. Exhale into downward facing dog. Look towards your hands, make your way forward and exhale, fold over the legs. And then you can stay here, or you can clasp the opposite elbow. Again, access the pelvic cavity so you can fold more deeply, tipping the weight onto the balls of your feet. Your neck is relaxed. Just allow the spine to lengthen. Find your ujjayi breath. Then release your arms as you inhale, sink into chest. So drop your hips down, extend your arms over your head. Make sure that you can see your toes and then gaze forward or your drishti towards your thumbs. And then come into Samasiti Hi, hands at your heart and relax. As you breathe and sweep your arms 
over your head, maybe even coming into a gentle back bend, but paying attention to what's happening in the front of the hips. And then exhale, come into a fold. If you want to, you can interlace the uh, hands behind you and then drop your arms. Just relaxing, not pulling. Seeing how much you can let go. And then you can release your arms. Lift up halfway as you breathe in. And then as you exhale into down dog. Breathe and lift your right leg up. And exhale down. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. This time lift and do gentle pulses. For another three, two, one. Step your right foot outside of the right hand and you can stay up with the left knee up or come down into lizard pose. Sonia's favorite. <laughs> you can come down onto your forearms and the body will tell you if it's an appropriate destination <laughs> or variant. Keep your chest open, dropping the hips down. Feel your hips getting heavy. Your belly button is drawn in. And then you can come up, so onto your hands if you had the forearms down. And then walk the right foot 45 degrees out. Bring the right hand to your inner right thigh or just on top and try to open so you can straighten the arm so it's like like this so you might roll out onto the right edge of your foot if that feels okay i'm just gonna find different ways you can open the hips because even though there are like four compartments, there are still many ways that you can find some tissues that need your attention for what you're after. And then bring yourself back to the center. Stay with the left hand down if you like. Reach for the right foot with or without the strap. Then explore different position of the hand, squaring the chest to the mat or not. You can even lift up and come into the King Arthur pose. So this way we try to spin the hand. And just be present. Check where you need to be. There is no like better, worse or posture. Just whatever is working, just stay there. Finding a balance between shtira and sukha. So effort and ease. And gently release the left leg, left foot. And make your way into downward facing dog. Pause for a moment. Breathe. And then step your right foot between the hands. Oh, outside of the left hand. If you've done what I just did, you can walk it out <laughs> to the outer part of the mat. And then drop your knee down. Check how things are, whether it makes sense to go down to your forearms today or on the side. And remember, it's all about the length of the spine. So with each inhalation, Try to elongate it. And for this one, try to bring the knee towards the shoulder. So we're pressing down through the inner edge of the left foot. And then come back to your hands. Walk the left foot out 45 degrees. And then you can bring the left hand to the thigh. 
aiming to open the thigh so we're not just pushing the hand into it it's like you try to roll it out and then maybe maybe not you straighten the arm roll onto the outer part of the left foot and breathe Gently release, walk the left foot in, and with the left hand, reach for the right foot. So sometimes the difference between the sides can seem or feel like quite drastic. Just practice equanimity and santosha, contentment. That this is where I got to today, and it's good enough. And sometimes you just need to keep repeating it until you believe it. And all the while we stay in the pose, you aim to drop the hips down. So instead of bringing them back, you want to roll them forward and come to the fleshy bit um, just above your knee. In terms of shtira and sukha, so how can you measure the balance between steadiness and ease. So through your breath. So if you enter the posture and you're like so activating, engaging, just striving, it's okay as long as your breath is easeful and steady. If it's not, then maybe it's time to back out. Gently release the right leg. Take your time and step into plank. Let's put the hips back together. Squeeze your thighs, push the mat away, and hold it here. And then spin on your feet, so coming to the outer edge of one foot, then the other. Do one more time. And then bend your right leg, bring, bring it through. And then the left one, so you cross the legs and roll over so you can extend them. So... Normally, you'd be jumped through, but I think it's going to take me another 10 years to do that. But it's okay. <laughs> so roll onto your back. And just take a couple of breaths to re-establish a sense of presence and grounding. Okay, so now we work with the dynamic flexibility. So hold the back of the left thigh trying to bring the front of it as close to your body as you can. That's it. And then as you inhale, straighten the left leg without losing the contact between the thigh and the torso or your belly. And then exhale, release. So four more times, following your own breath. You don't need to straighten the leg all the way. It's about the front body, contact or compression. And just work with what you've got. And then the last time, straighten and hold. And then draw your navel in. Release your arms. So see if you can keep the leg in this position. Hold it, breathe. And then gently lower. So you can lower all the way or let it hover above the mat. Press your hips down. Inhale, lift the leg up. Again, as close to, as close to your chest as you can. And exhale down. Breathe in. Breathe out, twice more, inhale, exhale, and then one more time, lift, and then re-bend, release, give it a shake. Let's do the other side. So, give your right thigh a hug. Activate your core, maybe squeeze your glutes, and then inhale, straighten the leg. Exhale, release. So four times, work with your breath. Keeping your neck and your jaw relaxed. And then one more time, straighten, squeeze it in, engage the muscles of your core and hip flexors to do this, and then let go of your arms. And stay, it's all good. Keep squeezing. 
stay present. And then exhale gently lower as far down as you like. And inhale, bring it up. So four. And up. Three. Keep your core active for the whole duration of the movement. Two. And one. Lift and hold. For three. Two. One. Release. Relax. And cross your left foot over the right knee, coming into a supine pigeon. Relax your shoulders. Just check what's available. We're not going to stay here long. We'll do that later. So just move from side to side just to bring some fresh energy to the hip all around. You can do some gentle, um, draw gentle circles. And then release. Switch sides. Check what's available on this side. And again, find any kind of movement that helps you get into some nooks and crannies. Just being present to what you discover on earth. No judgment or value. Come back to the center, release your legs, shake them out. Bend your legs, knees to chest, and then roll yourself up, cross your legs, and move into downward facing dog. Walk about halfway in and come up to standing. So make sure that you've got space around you. I'm gonna bring the stabilize through the left leg, standing leg, and then bring the right leg in front of you and then out and then behind you and out. So see if you can keep your balance at the same time kicking the leg quite far out. One more round. And then switch sides. So you can shake the legs out, shake the body out, just to make sure that we're not accumulating any tension. <laughs> so stabilize. <laughs> Left leg in front of you, and then kick it out, so like a pendulum, and behind you. So just be present to what's happening. If you topple over, it's fine. <laughs> I think the difficulty is that you bring the leg in front of you, and then switch it behind you, so your body needs to work harder to keep you upright. So one more round. Ooh, turns out if you do it faster, and just let go of the control, it's easier. Who would have thought? <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna kick up. So kick the leg up, and then you can bring it down. So four more times, see how high you can kick it. And then one more time, and release the other side. So left leg, just be careful that you don't kick too hard or you fall on your back. <laughs> Sonia, you did karate, didn't you? <laughs> so that's right up your street. <laughs> kind of. And one more time. And release. You can shake it out. So now we're going to do kind of like round kicks, but not behind, but in front of us. So like this. So you bring it in front of you to the side and like your painting a beautiful rainbow <laughs> with your foot. <laughs> Keep your core active and try to control the movement. Okay, one more time. Shake it out, the other side. So left leg. And remember, just start easy. You know, if you then feel you've got more range of movement available and you can do this, then you can do bigger circles. One more time. And then shake it up. Beautiful. Come to the top of the mat. Inhale. Lengthen through the body, maybe into a back bend. See what's going on in the hips. Exhale. 
coming to a fold. Inhale, half lift and exhale into plank and chaturanga. Inhale into your back bend. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, bend. Roll the hip open. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, knee to chest in plank. Inhale, re-extend. And exhale, step the foot between the hands. Warrior two, leg position. And move into Pajvakonasana. So either, you know the drill. Forearm on the knee. Hand in the inner or outer part of the foot. But just make sure that your legs are strong. So just because you can bring the hand down, whether it's on the forearm or all the way down, it doesn't mean that we use it for support. Tuck your tailbone under and feel the energetic opening in the hips. Extend through the left arm. You're drifting towards the left fingers. And breathe. Core is active. Keep pushing down with the legs. And then as you next inhale, straighten the right leg, moving into triangle pose, trikonasana. You can rest your hand on the shin, feel the opening and tucking under the tailbone. You can grab hold of your big toe and then bring the hand over your head, extending the arms, pushing down through the feet, externally rotating through the chest. Gaze towards the left finger, left thumb. Core is active. If your neck gets tired of being held in a particular position, gaze down. And with the next exhalation, just step into downward facing dog. Three breaths, you can drop down to child's pose if you like. One more breath. We meet in down dog. And then inhale, left leg up. Exhale, open through the hip. Inhale, three-legged. Exhale, knee to chest, plank, strong shoulders. Inhale, re-extend, three-legged. Exhale, step the foot between the hands, moving into side angle pose. So take your time. See which variation is available or appropriate on this side. Find your breath and then extend your right arm. External rotation in that shoulder. Gaze towards your right thumb. Two more breaths. Keep it steady. And then inhale, move into tree konasana. Again, there's no rush. Take your time. You want to feel lengthening through both sides of the body. Two more breaths. And then as you exhale into plank or down dog. Exhale, Chaturanga, as you're doing the Vinyasa. Inhale, back bend. And exhale, down dog. Make your way to the top of the mat as you breathe in. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up all the way, extended mountain. Exhale, hands at heart. Close your eyes here. Through your heart space. Go rest your thumbs on your sternum. So find your breath and just feel your heart. Just remembering that yoga is a kinder way to work your body. Remind yourself why you're doing it. And let this illuminate the next step on your path. One more breath. A deep inhalation, slow exhalation, 
Open your eyes. Inhale, extended mountain. And exhale into a fold. Inhale, hard lift. And exhale into down dog. Inhale, your right leg up, three-legged dog. And exhale, step the right foot between the hands. So this is where you might need your blocks. Remember, it's not about the competition, especially not with yourself. And we begin to kind of crawl our right foot forward. You can drop the left knee down and just see where you get to. Because you don't have to get all the way down. You can slide something under your thigh or just stay on your fingertips. We want to keep the right hip rolling forward rather than, you know, just coming into like this position. If you look at me for a second, you can see my left hip is lifted, but we don't want to do that. We want to keep it down. So it's an active posture. Use your core and just stay where you've got to. Apply some posture. The contentment. This is good enough. Just stay with your breath, feel the expansion, maybe point your right foot. And then slowly, so using your core, use your shoulders or the blocks, tuck your back toes and then slowly begin to bring the leg back behind you into downward facing dog. Then inhale your left leg up and exhale, step the left foot between the hands. So again, see if you want to drop the right knee down first of all, get your blocks set up. If you want to shimmy your left foot forward, dropping the right hip down. Just be kind. Remember the principle of ahimsa, so non-violence non-harming, settle where you got to and breathe, accept your limitations, accept the reality as it is. Take a couple more breaths. And then gently begin to push the mat away, tuck your back toes, and then slowly begin to bring the leg back. You might bring your mat with you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and then sit on your heels if you can, or in a cross-legged position or anything comfortable, just for a couple of breaths. Cupping your hands in your lap. Just feeling the energy of the pose. Hanumanasana is a very expansive one. Just allow that energy to settle and become observant. And then open your eyes. And you're going to move into a nice long pigeon pose. So take your time. So start with the right leg. So make sure that your back leg is nice and straight. Any extra padding to elevate the right hip. Find an upright position to begin with because that will give you an indication of what's happening in the hips. And then when you're ready, surrender. So come all the way down, support your head. Just do anything. That's nurturing. Use your ujjayi breath to remain present. Breathe in and out of any sensations or any areas of intensity. 
just simply remain attentive to what's happening in your body without trying to change the nature of things. Take three more breaths and begin preparing to move when you're ready. Gently lift up and you can step back into plank if you like or slide to the right, sweep your left leg over and gently, mindfully transition. doesn't matter how you do it, but that you pay attention. And again, step by step, check your alignment, check how it feels, any movement, if available. Drop the right hip down, that also helps for Hanumanasana practice. So you can bring the right hand to the right hip to remind yourself to try to keep it down. Open the chest, lengthen through the spine, and as you exhale, Slowly descend, closing the eyes, stepping into the inner world again. Surrendering and letting go as we breathe out. Take three more cycles of breath. And then slowly lift up. Slide your left thumb cheek down, sweep the right leg over. And you can bring the legs in front of you. Just shake them out. Feet as wide as the hips, fingers pointing the same way as you're looking. And then inhale, lift your hips up. Roll your shoulders in, maybe drop the head back. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, hips down. Come to a comfortable seated position. So we'll do pranayama before shavasana. And we will do brahmari breath. I don't think I've ever taught that, especially not on Zoom, but I figured out how I can do it without making it disruptive. <laughs> so for the first one, I'll show you with the earphone, um, with the, the mic in, and then I'll take it out so you can like, focus on your own practice, if that makes sense. So it's the B breath. I think, Sonia, you experienced that at one of the retreats. So what you can do is place your index and middle finger on your eyes, your eyelids, and very gently apply some pressure. And then you put the thumbs into like your ears just to cover the whole, so like you don't want to hear what I'm saying. <laughs> and essentially you take a breath in, and for the breath out, you hum, so like a bee. So, mm, until you run off air, and then you carry on. So inhale, exhale, humming. And it's a particularly good, breathing technique if you're feeling anxious. Um, it's also thought that the vibrations, you know, help to release any stagnant energy. And similarly to Ujjayi breathing, it helps you stay grounded and connected to your body, to what's happening right here and now, because you can't hear anything by your humming and your breath. So um, I'll take the mic out. You'll probably still hear me when I do it, but we'll do a few rounds and then when, I, when, when it's enough, then I'll let you know, okay? All right, so index and middle fingers, either gently pressing to your eyes 
or just covering them just in terms of Pachahara, so it helps to withdraw the senses or like redirect them inwards and then your thumbs covering the ear holes. Take a deep breath in and hum. Mm. And inhale and again. Two, three more rounds. And when you're ready, release your breath, release your hands, keep your hands in any comfortable position and just stay with the energy that you've stirred. And perhaps the, you can feel the, the echo of the vibration. Take a deep breath in, out through the mouth. And then make your way onto your back for Shavasana. Just take a really deep breath in. And as you exhale, one more time, give yourself permission to let go. Or declare that you're willing to forgive or release something that's been weighing you down, whatever that might be, however big or small. And then rest, so bathing in the sensations, in the energy, in your prana. Allow yourself to be as you are.
and take a deeper, more conscious breath in. And let it go with a sigh. I'm just feeling any residual tension or stress. Just quietly, softly leaving the body. Take one more cleansing breath. Feeling lighter in your body, mind, and spirit of all the release that you've done. Begin to move your body slowly and mindfully, and roll over to one side. And then gently. Come on up into a comfortable position. And meeting yourself so we can end the practice together with a round of arm. So close your eyes, bring your hands in, Anjali Mudra. One more time, connect with your heart space, feeling all the love, the infinite love that resides there within you. Gently bow your head, thanking yourself, thanking your body, your breath, and then lift your head up. And let's, let's close the practice one round of OM. So inhale to OM. With the next exhalation, gently open your eyes. Thank you very much for your practice with me today. Namaste. <laughs> nice. oh, it's, dark. it's so dark where you are, Sonia. Creeps <laughs> <laughs> up on you, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. That's time of the year. How are you feeling? 